Okay, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, fire was the first technology, and uh, this is the first operation which not able repeat and perform any other beings on the animal universe of animal. Uh, it's power and dependence, like for example a uh, mobile phone. It's a power and dependence. You can imagine you lost your mobile, lost the connection in the human society. It's, this is the same situation with the fire, with the fi fire, because without fire, not able to function, not able to survive, because the humans migrate, moved from Africa to Europe and to uh, Euro Asia and hostile physical environment. Without fire, without anthropocene, anthropogene fire, not able to survive. Uh, but fuel demand is a very important problem and pollution in the modern time, uh, mainly. Okay, uh, other very interesting uh, indicator of human evolution, increase of size of human brain. You can see the, uh, the size under 500 uh, milliliter and the modern time is uh, 1500. But very interesting, it's a guess, which is the reason that the brain of female is uh, smaller than the male. Why? It's not a arguments of sexism. It's a, it's a evidence. Why? Which is the reason that the female brain is a smaller? You have some idea? In normal situation, it's uh, there are a male student. It's very proud. <laughs> Larger one. Okay, but you can see. So you just, uh, um, typically, women are smaller than. Yeah, women. it's very simple. Uh, it's named a D. Morphism, a dimorphism. The size of female is 10 to 20 person, a smaller one. Everything is smaller. A hand, for example, a legs, a, a, a head, and the size of brain. No technological consequences. No uh, silliness, no indicator of, uh, of silliness. No, only smaller one. The efficiency and the function, not Worse. Only the smaller one. And the smaller male, smaller brain. Everything changed according to uh, changing of, uh, of uh, size. But very interesting how it increased the size of, uh, of brain. It's an indicator of human evolution. And uh, very important, uh, as I mentioned on the movie, that uh, smelling is very important. Uh, advantage in the process of uh, hunting and general sense on the case of survival. But very interesting operation was the second crucial domestication, domestication of dogs. Domestication of dogs. According to DNA reconstruction might be happened 100,000 years ago, but the first evidences, first domesticated uh, dog evidences found in uh, archaeological site 330,000 uh, years ago. And very interesting, the humans tried to domesticate not only the dog, but uh, uh, I was very surprised when first time I read about no species as dog. No species, no spo uh, it's a unique species of dog. Dog, one subspecies of wolf. Wolf and the dog are the same species. And look, uh, probably you know the chihuahua, the dog chihuahua. And the chihuahua is the same species like a wolf. <laughs> it's very surprising, very surprising. Uh, a lot of different, uh, it was a breeding technology, uh, changed the size of, uh, changed the size of, uh, of, uh, of wolves and the dogs. Uh, you know how unfolded the, 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 the breeding of, uh, of, uh, of domestication, no? Uh, basically, uh, based to the orphan, orphan wolf theory. Kill the mother of wolves and the cubs move to the human communities. And basically, the technology of breeding 
domestication, it's a fixing the psychological structure of wolf to two mouth old phases. Two mouth old phases. Because if, uh, for example, you play, uh, for example, with one lion, if a lion or tiger or every wild animal younger than two months old, it's very kind, very kind. But around two months old age, start to develop a individual character, save the territory and uh, separate them his or herself from uh, from uh, environment and for community and uh, uh, and and became dangerous for human therefore the selection is very simple selection is very simple for example in uh, russia in soviet union uh, one fur company you know fur company it's a silver fox it's very, uh, the, the, the coat of silver fox is very expensive. And in Siberia, had a fur company with a lot of silver. It's a bread of silver foxes. Silver foxes is a white animal. Therefore, time by time, had an accident by the hand of uh, uh, the workers of fur company and started uh, breeding from fox a domesticated fox. And very interesting, it's very simple. Russian like story. Russian like mean if one fox bite the hand of worker, move to the fur company. And only the uh, foxes left inside of the program, which behave very, very friendly. And for 40 years, 40 years long experiment domesticated a domesticated foxes but with some special accident change the color of fur and change the structure of body became a dog like fox and in the historical past happened the same the humans uh, early humans tried to domesticate the foxes similar Therefore, uh, if we have to define which is the dog, dog is a young uh, psychological structure uh, uh, demonstrating wolves. You can, you can see, for example, if you have a dog, it's, it's very, very like to play with the humans and depend from the humans. But there are some very dangerous uh, um, uh, dog subspecies. Somebody know, for example, uh, uh, how the name is? Uh, uh, it's a garb dog of Moscow. You know, it's a special subspecies which bred uh, in the frame of Russian army. Save the territory and don't fear from human. Very dangerous. Very dangerous because the strategy of domestication. It's a saving the territory. For example, a military uh, a military uh, uh, basis and, and so on and so on. Okay, but basically the domestication somehow fixing a infantile psychological profile of the dog. But which is the advantage of domestication of fire? Sensibility of mouse, much better. If, uh, uh, for example, we can imagine how more sensible the dog compared with the human. The, for example, receptor of nose in the, in the human, it's, it's very simple. But it's 10 centimeter surface. But the dog like a field of stadium, football stadium, receptor. It's much sensible. Therefore, the domestication of fire improved the chance of hunting and very important, a dog not only a hunter fellow, but it's a stock of meat. If the hunting is unsuccessful, ate the dog. Some civiliz civilization even know, even though it's a cruel and hard word 
Therefore, the dog and the, and the other one, three function of the dog. The first one, hunter for all. The, the second one, it's a signing animal, able to indicate, able to sign somebody approaching to the camp of human. And the last one, stock of meat, stock of meat. Good. And these are the uh, two theory about, about the uh, domestication of fire. Orphan wolf cub uh, uh, theory, as I mentioned before. And the second one, uh, self-domestication. Some animal domesticated himself or herself, themselves. Like, for example, a pig. A pig domesticated, domesticated themselves because a lot of waste of the human camps is edible for the pigs because the stomach, uh, digestion of stomach, much harder compared. And this is the same situation with the, uh, with the dogs. Uh, somebody live together with the dogs? No? Never? Uh, I spent my childhood in a small village and for example is the dog barking it's not bothering me because according to my socialization barking is a part of silence uh, villages noises for example uh, uh, pigs uh, cats uh, dogs and, uh, and the cattle it's no noise for me because I socialized with the noise uh, of, uh, of this animal. And uh, for example, I was very surprised. Uh, my dog is uh, on the courtyard, is walking and stop for one meter, two meters and ate something. You can... This is a guess. Which ate on the courtyard? Sheet of chicken. Oh. Sheet of chicken, Why? Sulfur content. It's very high in the sheet of chicken. And taste of chicken, sheet, I don't know. But it's possible, I can imagine a similar situation that I ate. <laughs> okay, anyway, domestication of animal, uh, of dog was the second one, the second after the fire. Okay, good. And a very important step, the third step in human evolution, which a famous American archaeologist named the Great Leap, the Great Jump of Human Evolution, which are the Great Leap of Human Evolution. You can see the trajectory of, uh, of uh, different uh, uh, tools made by humans. The early phase uh, started. Uh, 2 million, 2.5 million years ago. It's a very simple tools used, for example, one rocks and very, very simple, uh, one, two, three different form of the rocks. Uh, a little bit later, jump uh, more complicated tools, but not so high the jump up, but something happened approximately 50 to 60 uh, uh, thousand years ago. It's named a great leap, a great leap, uh, somewhere after uh, 50,000 before prison. It's a great uh, mystery of human history, which happened on that time. The first finally made tools appear the fishing, appear the fishing with different special tools of fishing. Uh, evidence of long distance exchange and barter among a trade, appeared the trade between different parts of the world, uh, appeared a systematic use of pigments and jewelry and self decoration, for example, on the face, made up, and, uh, and uh, for example, some tattoo on the, on the, on the skins, and figurative, figurative art, cave painting, petroglyphs, figurines, game playing, and the first, uh, uh, how the name is, a flute. The first flute uh, found uh, in Aburio. And appeared Aburio. Why is it so important? Because some imagination about uh, other world, other world after the death, some early form of religion. It's happened approximately around 50,000 years before prison. It's a great leap, great leap on the human evolution. Okay. And very interesting, when reconstructed the DNA, 
It's a heritage material, you know which, which are the DNA. It's a heritage material passed generation by generation. It's very surprising. Identify, it's made a lot of experiment everywhere on the world, and they made a very, very radical conclusion. The first one, we are, under, we, we have two antecedents, one Eve and one Adam. According to this approach, it's Bible, the story of Bible is true. But Eve and Adam lived in different age, different period. Adam, uh, sorry, Eve, mitochondrial Eve, lived around 140,000 years ago. And Adam lived approximately 50, 60, recently it's uh, re, uh, 70,000 uh, years ago. Why so interesting? Because something happened, something special, around 50,000 before prison. Some, some, somebody know what happened? No? Uh, no? Not necessary to know. I speak about, uh, I will speak about. Uh, it's a volcano eruption. Volcano eruption. Volcano eruption is a great disaster. Great disaster. It's possible. Uh, it's happened in uh, 2010. A great volcano eruption on Iceland. And paralyzed each of, uh, of uh, plane traffic, whole of Europe. Because the uh, dust content of uh, atmosphere is so high that very dangerous uh, uh, any form of aviation. And show and demonstrate a sensibility and fragility of uh, modern technology. But the Toba, Toba volcano, located in, uh, in uh, Indonesia, it was a great disaster. It's a global disaster. Uh, each great global volcano eruption follow a nuclear winter. You know which is the nuclear winter. So dense the way around the atmosphere that no summertime. Four years. Four years. A little bit similar uh, situation killed the uh, dinos, the dinosaurs, in uh, uh, 60, uh, 60 million years ago. But it was not so tragical, but it was a great disaster. In consequence of Toba volcano eruption, started Africa a great drought, dry period, great drought. And the population of human in Africa reached, decreased to 5,000 people on the very near to extinction, very, very near to extinction. And in small community appear a very, very good DNA is Adam. And it's demonstrate well, which is the uh, consequence of positive mutation. Because each of people after Adam, after the disaster, in small community is a, uh, how the name is, uh, is uh, uh, our, uh, how the name is, uh, outspring, out outspring. Out our descendant, maybe? Uh, uh, our antecedent, Adam, offspring, offspring is a, yeah, okay, 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 a little bit later, the words don't come easy. We are offspring of Adam. Each of us, each of us, everywhere. Uh, Inuits in the uh, Alaska or Scandinavia or, or, uh, or Japan or China, everywhere. We are an offspring of Adam. Why? Because Adam was a very skilled people, very skilled people, and uh, not a uh, supporter of uh, uh, monogamy. It uh, had a lot of lover all the time. And uh, positive mutation, positive uh, peculiarities, positive uh, skills of Adam, it's uh, survived. And we are offspring of 
Eve and Adam. Why might happen and why might survive a positive mutation? Because the community is very small and turn to dominate position, a positive skills. Recently, no chance. Recently, we are living on the verb 8 billion. And the behavior of positive mutation, like for example, a wave on the ocean, start a great wave, but in consequence, large surface of ocean, the size of wave after some time some period, some time, decrease. Therefore, recently, no chance for, uh, for, for, um, uh, uh, for, uh, for uh, reinforcing of positive mutation for the high population number. But on this critical situation had a chance for positive mutation became a dominant, dominant uh, uh, nature of survival community. Okay. Uh, which were the most important consequences? Uh, as I spoke two lectures before, that the uh, whole of human evolution unfolded in Great Ice Age. Great Ice Age. In Africa, Africa wasn't a, uh, a cold weather, but the change of weather, change of climate appeared on the form of drought, on the dry period. Okay. Uh, how changed the climate before and after the Great Ice Age? Climate change, of course, as I mentioned, sea level changes. A sea level changes mean uh, on the coldest period of uh, Pleistocene Ice Age, the water level was 100 meter lower compared with the recent situation. And after the closing of uh, uh, Ice Age, rose with 100 meter. For example, uh, some period, uh, Mediterranean Sea, it's dried out, dried out, almost all of that. Uh, changed flora and fauna, and ge geological and isostatic is is moving happen. Uh, this is the trajectory of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, climate change. This is the recent time here, and uh, this is the trajectory of cooling. And according to this uh, trend line, not as sure, I'm not as sure that close the ice age because the trend line is continue other. But we are living here. Close the last ice age period of view and the water became warmer. And it's possible, I told to you, there is a hypothesis we are in ice age. Warm period of ice age is contradictory because the uh, most important danger recently the recent global warming, but it's possible the context, the larger context, is a, is a ice age, uh, is, okay, integration in the ice age, it's possible, but uh, no final cognition about it. Okay, uh, how changed the water level? Uh, you can see we are recently in the zero, in the recent time, and rise up the step-by-step up. Uh, sea level in consequence of melting the great huge uh, uh, ice area, ice cover area. Uh, it's not interesting how change the vegetation and very interesting the phases of warming after the uh, after the I placed it in ice age. For example, a Sahara desert, which is recently one of the largest. Uh, desert area uh, around 10,000 years ago had a very fertile, very fertile savanna area, and you can see petroglyphs in a part of the of the Sahara, uh, fishing people and uh, deers and elephants and the humans in the core area of desert. Moreover. On 10,000 years ago, had a huge sea, like a black, black sea, inside of the Sahara. Recently, the Lake Chad, Lake Chad, its the size decreased year by year in consequence of global warming and global desiccation. But 10,000 years ago, it was an inner sea, 
with same size like a black sea. And uh, at the end of uh, at the end of uh, ice age, a lot of species extincted, like for example uh, animals. More, it's a megafauna name, more than 40 kilograms, adult size. Uh, but very interesting, the uh, the different rate of uh, extinction in northern part of America. 33 sub uh, species, not sub species, animal species, mammals died out from 45. In South America, 46 from uh, uh, 58. Australia, almost each of large animal it's uh, extinct, but very interesting in Europe, much smaller, and the sub-Saharan Africa, only two animal extinct. Somehow, Euro-Asia fauna no so uh, high proportion of extinction. Why? The solution of this problem is uh, extinction. Uh, sorry, a uh, human migration. If we are looking at the human migration, a uh, humans even on the time of, uh, of uh, Homo, uh, Homo uh, erectus left Africa. In consequence, lower level of sea on the direction of Iberian Peninsula and on the direction of Arabian Peninsula. Move to the New World, move uh, to Australia and move on the Bering Land Bridge to Americas. And very interesting, it's possible, I spoke about before, uh, a question of environmental protection. On that time, uh, uh, function some form of environmental protection, named a mythological environmental protection. Imagine the people that behind the cave, behind the mountain, behind the forest, behind the valley, there are some uh, mystical uh, beings, like for example, jinn, like for example, angel, and so and so. If somebody hurt this physical environmental unit, the angel and the mythical being will punish. But for evolution, the mythical environmental protection necessary settle down, living together. And these people are moving, no any connection to the local fauna, local animal, local physical environment. Therefore, when the first human arrived in America, moved continuously and killed everything which met on the trajectory of migration. Killed everything. The same situation happened in Australia. It's a very interesting story. How was able to sail by boat from Indonesia to uh, uh, to Africa, uh, to sorry, Australia, because no visual contact to uh, Australia, but used for example, uh, uh, for example, experience about the bird migration, the same like for example in Europe when moved the European sailor to Iceland and Greenland, because the bird regularly moved northward. In this case, move south eastward. And imagine that some continent, some island might happen, might exist on this direction. And the second crucial information for the first uh, uh, conqueror of Australia, you know which is the most important disaster even now in Australia? Fire. Fire. It's a great, great bush fire. Great bush fire. And the bush fire made a smoke tower, which visible from very far, a smoke fire. And say to Australia and killed 90% of large animals. No any medical, no any real connection. Necessary some term, some time, evolve a relation to the local physical environment. And, for example, in northern part of America, only two animals, two large animals survived an uh, uh, invasion of humans. A grizzly, you know, a bear, a grizzly bear, and a bison. Not so easy to domesticate a grizzly bear. Not so easy. Great challenge, but not possible. Uh, okay, look at the story. Uh, uh, extinction of animals. 
Uh, it's very obvious, this uh, uh, diagram shows well, uh, an extinction of animal started with appearance of human, appearance of humans, basically named a prehistoric overkill hypothesis. Free strike, we have to recon climate change, which challenge for the animals too. The second one, overkilling. Overkilling because no any relation to the local fauna, local animals, local physical environment, and hyper disease because the human in the new environment uh, brought with them a bacteria, virus, and fungi, which no any uh, 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 experience the local animal and the local people. And you can see Africa. This is the indicator when decrease the fauna. Australia appear the human. You can see the arrow, the black arrow. The same situation, North America and a little bit later in Madagascar. When appear the humans killed. Uh, it's possible I told to you that um, Indian uh, um, ecologist, eco-philosopher, eco wrote a very seminal book about the human dominance. If we can calculate according to meat kilograms uh, of uh, fauna in continental area, one third of the uh, weight of animals, including human, one third who are living in continental area are humans. One third, the closest friend of humans, it's mean cattle, pigs, goats, domesticated animals. One third. Two third of uh, body, according to weight, are human and domesticated animals. And only one, five percent, five percent wild animal living, original, physical environment. Between the gap between the human and the closest friend, there are wild animal, like for example rabbit, like rats, living in human ecosystems. Wandering for, for, for example a rabbit on the rainbow land, it's a, not a natural environment. Majority of wild animal who are living in natural environment, basically living in national parks. National parks in Africa, even in Hungary, in everywhere. Unfortunately, therefore, it's made only five person. Five person of recent fauna is a natural which happened, for example, 100,000 years ago. Therefore, the most important uh, target and operation of humans simplifying of chain of, uh, of, uh, of uh, how the name, uh, of consummation, chain of, con simplify, simplify the chain of consummation. Because if we are looking at uh, the story of moving, you remember the tree story. Humans are on the middle of chain of consummation, not on the top. Each animal, he which were upper than the human, lions, tigers, and wolves and any other, very close to the extension. The human it's cancel everything upper down. Okay. Uh, great migration. Homo erectus started the great migration. Homo sapiens uh, continues the great migration. And the last wave of uh, migration uh, to Americas and to Australia started around uh, 60,000 uh, years ago. And uh, the reason of uh, migration on the time, uh, uh, in consequence of rising of uh, water level, uh, former time, the Bering land bridge became a Bering Strait. The animation show well how changed. You can see how changed this is the uh, coastline model. Coastline uh, on the last phase of the ice age, 20,000 years ago, 
and rose uh, water level and transform the land bridge to uh, strait. Okay, immigration to Australia. It's, uh, it, I spoke about uh, Australian Aborigines appeared around 50,000 years ago from Malay archipelago and arrived to Australia and transformed the physical environment basically. Okay, if we are looking at the trajectory, how changed the human, the human population, uh, we can estimate uh, a human population 1 million on the Paleolithic age, 10 million Neolithic age, 100 million Bronze Age, 1 billion uh, at the, uh, at the uh, dawn of uh, Industrial Revolution and 10 billion. And very interesting story, at the beginning of this course I spoke about, it's not a, 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 it's not a continuous, uh, uh, I, I spoke about um, demographical transition, yes or no? Demographical transition. It's possible not. It's possible. Okay, I start if you remember some memory, <laughs> I will stop. Uh, it's very important, a crucial question. It's continuous and will continue uh, 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 increase of human population because it's exponential trajectory. It's no, it's what I spoke about. I remember the uh, exponential. Uh, it's no exponential, but we'll stop in consequence of demographical uh, transition. Demographical transition means if we are looking at uh, fertility of human community in the traditional age, before the modernization, we can uh, estimate around 40,000, uh, 30,000. 1,000 mean we calculate uh, every indicator 2,000 person. Uh, uh, our continuous line is a mortality and the scattered line is a fertility. If I, I show yes, you. Yes. Okay, okay, not necessary. Finally, this is the trajectory, or repeat for the other student. Uh, this is the traditional phase, very high the mortality and very high the fertility, and decrease the uh, mortality, and the fertility left very high. This is the second phase, one and the second, stabilize the mortality and decrease the uh, decrease the fertility and uh, this is the second uh, third phase and the last phase when stabilized e in the modern conditions this is the uh, this is the uh, this is the breakdown the wave of uh, fertility and uh, and the growth of population and generally we are stabilized around 12 billion people according to forecast of population Good. And very interesting, it's only a peculiarity, but very interesting if somebody, somebody visited in Scandinavia, mm -hmm. some country, which... Yeah. Uh, Denmark. Denmark. Denmark not so sensible, yeah. but the Sweden, uh, Sweden isostatic uh, rising. You know the story? No, no. okay. Uh, basically, on the time of Ice Age, a huge and very deep ice cover, cover whole of the uh, northern part of uh, of uh, uh, northern part of the of the globe of the earth and the behavior and the structure of globe probably you know there are three zones this is the earth inner part of the earth this is the core area mainly from iron this is the reason of gravity, this is the reason of, uh, of the magnetic fields and so and so. Core area. The second one is a mental area, a mental area. Uh, we can test about the mental area on the case of volcano eruption. The volcano eruption we test which is the nature of mantle. And the last one, this is the mantle. A crust, a crust of the, of the earth. Size of the crust changed between uh, 120 to 160 kilometers. Not so deep, not so deep. This is the crust, the cold crust area. And behave the earth like, for example, a football ball. If push one direction, 
change the form. And it happened in the northern part of Earth a huge quantity of huge quantity of ice pushed down, pushed down the earth, melted this huge quantity of ice and started the crust rising up. Therefore, it's a very, very special situation. Size of Scandinavian peninsula increased, rising up from the ocean. Rising up from the ocean. And uh, during the Pleistocene Ice Age, pushed down with 240 kilo 40 kilometers. No, meters, 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 kilometers is too much. 240. And rising up one, one meter per 100 years, one century. Rising up, rising up. Close the story of, uh, uh, of uh, Pleistocene Ice Age approximately 12,000 years ago. Therefore, 100 meters, 120 meters, it's done. Increase, increase the size without any war or conquering or any military operation, rising up. It's correction. It's a geological correction. It's pushed down, rising up. It's peculiar, the geological peculiar. Yeah. Okay, uh, no closing today's lecture, only change the slide series. Uh, to the next uh, lecture, I will uh, print out. Okay, uh, we continue the story of human evolution. If we are looking at human evolution, uh, a crucial the relation to the physical environment. The first domestication was domestication of fire. The second domestication, domestication of dog. And the third domestication, domestication and, and making agriculture. It's named agrarian revolution. If we are looking at the story of agrarian revolution, these are a different subsistence system. The first subsistence system, hunting gathering. It's very simple. Small community, like in the movie, moving one part to other, hunting and gathering, hunting and gathering. And there is a very important peculiarity of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, the evolutionary psychology. Evolution. Try to describe the behavior of humans according to evolution, because during long story of human evolution had a lot of challenges. The men hunted, women. Gathering and the older and the younger member of community. And for example, uh, evolutionary psychology dis de uh, uh, describes the behavior of human in the shopping center according to evolutionary adaptation. Why? Look at the hunt hunter. Hunter is looking the gray animal. And running, killed, and brought at home. This is the behavior of human in shopping center. Directly approach to the prey, it's maybe a trouser, maybe a coat, buy and left the place. Look at the women gathering, walking, looking, walking. It's good, it's not good, I go to. But uh, for example, a uh, 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 plants not able to move other place like in the hunter and turn back and pick I don't know. it's possible not true I am not a specialist of, of the psychology but something may happen in the evolutionary psychology okay hunting gathering the first phase of uh, of uh, uh, agriculture forest fellow uh, and uh, it's a it's a burning agriculture, burn down some part of the forest and uh, cultivate and left the cultivation and turn back only more decay, therefore the forest vegetation able recovery. Bush a little bit shorter the fallow period uh, and the rotation system, annual cropping, this is the multi-cropping system, 
around the modern agriculture using fertilizer, pesticides, and so and so. Therefore, this is the trajectory. But the great leap is turn hunting gathering to agriculture. This is the great leap. And some area of the world there are there are living communities according to according to hunting gathering uh, lifestyle. Two community living even now according to lifestyle and subsistence system of hunter gatherer are uh, Bushman or themselves named uh, Kungs, like Hungarians uh, themselves named Magyar, and the foreign people named to Hungarian. This is the same situation. It's named a Bushman living in Kalahari Desert. Kalahari Desert. And very interesting. Uh, anthropologists describe the lifestyle of Bushmans. Uh, you know which is the uh, differences between ethnography and anthropology? Very close to each other. Describe the behavior and the, and the rights and, and the lifestyle of a local community. But the basic difference is ethnographer, ethnography founded in the 19th century which is the style of 19th century. This is the subject of research. I am looking at the subject of research. I am gathering the information about subject and research and traveling, for example, a local community, aboriginals speaking about them, turn back to the university and write a study about my experiences. This is the ethnography. This is the style of 19th century, separate the researcher and separate the subject of research. But ethnograph uh, ethnography founded in the 20th century. No separation, no any separation. Uh, anthropologists living together with the local community, living together. And uh, Richard Borshili traveled to Kalahari Desert and live together with the Bushman community five years. Five years. For example, uh, I taught at the Central European University when I was in Budapest and were together one uh, anthropologist who traveled to Hungary and uh, he specialized to the gypsy community. The gypsy community. Right, Hungary and moved to Sajubabon. Moved to a uh, very simple hut and live together three years, three years, a local gypsy community. First days would like to kill him. And to the second year, he was a godfather, each of the newborn baby, <laughs> except in the local community. And uh, uh, anthropology, very important, no previous cognition, no previous uh, information about the community and each of crucial information uh, picking on the time living together, living together. And Richard Borchili uh, published a very seminal book and uh, for example one of the most important uh, conclusion as I mentioned on the, on the, on the, on the case of the movie that the lifestyle of traditional society, not traditional, it's early hunter-gatherer society, short, cruel and dirty. And uh, my guest, last guest today, recently, it's possible I asked before, but I don't remember, uh, how many persons in Hungary, how many persons of uh, uh, people die for violence? Violence may be car accident, maybe a robbery, maybe suicide, it's a violence. How many persons? One, two, three, four. Guess, how many persons? More than 1,000. More than? More than 1,000. No, no more than 1,000. 1,000 is the upper limit. Oh, okay. 1,000 is a, is a whole of the community, uh, a whole of the death, all whole of the number of the death. How many persons inside of the 10,000? Violence, suicide, car accident, uh, robbery. 20 or? 20. Okay, first offer 20. 20 persons. 
15. 15 person. Okay. 30. Approximately 25. 25 person, but the reality very surprising, very surprising. Why? Because if you switch on the, uh, for example, news and uh, electronic journals and the paper-based journals, the, the most important news, the leading news, some accidents, some, for example, military operation. But very important to realize the modern were peaceful and became step by step peaceful. On the hunter-gatherer community, one third, one third, 30 person killed by violence, killed the rival tribe, killed the uh, predators, killed the, uh, for example, enemies. And if we are looking at the trajectory of civilization, the civilization made step by step more peaceful the behavior of humans. Look at, for example, uh, on the time of Middle Ages, European Middle Ages, during the Middle Ages, the head of household made kill each member of his family. Made kill. No any legal consequences. When appeared the better organized state, absolute state, the, uh, the law of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, execution, it's monopolized by uh, state. And recently, no uh, death penalty in the civilized world. And this is the same, uh, for example, with the weapons. Uh, I socialized and I spent my childhood on a villages area, an eastern quite a traditional area. And each male on the pocket there is a knife. Not for killing each other. This is a device. It's a normal device. And I wear and I brought with my a knife, but recently I left in my office. But uh, step by step, uh, for example, uh, the human uh, socialized for fight. And first step, monopolized by state, and recently we are living in the modern time, every community specialized. For example, a soldier who specialized for violence had so skills that I had not had, we have no chance for them. And we uh, educated generation by generation that the violence is not our job. For example, uh, some months ago I visited uh, in uh, London, in the uh, United Kingdom, and each vehicle, there is a phone number. If you see something, call. No personal operation. Call and specialized guard, policeman and other will arrive and solve the problem. Okay. We will continue in the next week with uh, this slide and I ask your patience for some.